There are a few methods. Uh, with the help of those methods, we can deploy a CCM client to our Windows 10 devices or Windows 7 or 8 devices. So the first method uh, we discussed about a CCM uh, push install. Um, link is given in the description of this video if you would like to check it out. And the second method is if you would like to install it manually, you can use PowerShell or CMD to achieve this. And in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, SCCM client through GPO install group policy install. Hello everyone, this is Jay Singh and uh, welcome to my channel Technex Solutions. In this video, we are going to talk about SCCM client install with the help of group policy. So to do that, we need to create a shared folder. So uh, typically you will create this shared folder on um, your file server. At the moment I have a domain controller and SCCM server. So what I will do is I will attach a um, hard disk, a virtual hard disk to domain controller and then I'm going to share that out. So um, my domain controller is currently running and uh, the beauty of Hyper-V is with the running machine we can add virtual hard drive which I'm going to do that right now. So if I click, uh, right click on a domain controller and I will go to the settings of it. To the settings, what I will do in the SCSI controller, if I click on hard drive and then add, so the beauty of these settings is it will add the virtual hard drive and at the same time it will help us create the virtual hard disk with this window. So in here, virtual hard disk, I will say new. So it will open a new window. In the new window, so we will create a new virtual hard drive, dynamical expanding. I'm happy with that and click next. So I will name it, uh, I'm going to name it share drive 01. So it is SD01. And location, so I will pick my own location. You can pick yours where you would like to save it. Um, I'm going to select that folder VHDs and then I click next and the size here. So I will say 10 gigabytes for now and if I would like to increase, I can always come back here and increase this or expand this virtual hard disk. So I will click next and uh, finish that. So our, um, I will hit apply and okay. So our virtual hard disk is ready. So now we will log on to our domain controller. In server manager of our domain controller, if I click on file and storage services and under disks, you can see that uh, we have two disks available. So if you do not see two disks, you can only see one, then you can uh, refresh that here and then you will see this one here. So you can see that that one is offline. So first of all, we will bring it in online so we can right click and bring online. Say yes. And uh, once it is online, then partition style, you can see it says unknown. So to fix that, we will right click and then we will click on new volume. And after that, click next and um, pretty much I will keep everything default. Next. Okay. And uh, volume size, this is the maximum it can go, 9.97. I'm happy with that. Click next and drive letter. If you would like to change it, you can pick your own. I'm happy with E. Click next and the file system. Um, pretty much everything I will keep default and label, I would label it SD01 and click next and create. All right, so our disk is ready. So now we can go ahead and uh, create a new share to do that. In the same window, we will click on shares and in this empty space here, you can right click and click on new share or you can click on tasks and then click on new share. So pretty much here I'm um, keeping everything default, SMB, share quick, share location, and I will choose a custom path and browse to E drive, and which is SD01, and then we will create a new folder. I'm naming it applications. You can pick your own name, select that folder. So you can see that the path is selected, the folder is selected. Uh, click next and it will pick the share name applications and uh, this is the local path to share which is e backward slash applications and remote path is technex dash dc01 and applications so i'll go ahead with that and other settings i'm keeping this default as well permissions is very important i'm going to change some permissions here so all we want is every user to come here and read only so we will click on customize permissions and then click on share and with allow everyone we will edit that and instead of full control we'll give only read permissions click ok and apply and ok so click next and confirm and click on create 
So our shade folder is ready now. So now we are going to create GPO. To do that, we will group policy management. Before we go ahead, let's open our Active Directory. I will show you the OU where I'm going to apply that uh, group policy. So it is in uh, Technex computers. I have all my computers sitting here at the moment. I have only one computer, which is PC-01. Later on, maybe I will add more. So this is my test machine. I'm going to test um, this policy on this machine, which is PC-01. And I will open a group policy management. So in group policy management, I will extend technex.local and you can see technex computers here. I have already a group policy, SCCM client rules. I have made some client rules and uh, I put them here. On top of that, uh, what I can do is I'll right click technex on computers or you create a GPO in this domain and link it here. I'm going to link that here. I will name it SCCM deployment and click OK. Alright, so we can see that our SCCM deployment group policy object is here. Uh, it is a uh, link number two. So that is fine. And I will right click and edit that and um, in here. So we will see in computer configuration, we see that um, in policies, extend policies and administrative templates, right click on that and add remove templates. So we are going to add two templates here. These templates at the moment are sitting on our SCCM server. So we have to browse to SCCM server. Uh, Windows R, I will go backward slash backward slash technex dash SCO1 and it is my um, SCCM server. So I will open that. So it will reach out to SCCM server and we can see that here. So under SMS underscore TEK, um, our two templates at the moment they are sitting under they will be in tools in tools config manager ADM templates double click you can see these two templates here so I will copy that path and I'll minimize this and click on add and then browse to that path which I just copied I will paste it here and click on this arrow and we can see both select both and click open they are added here and we just close it so we will extend administrative templates and then we will go to classic administrative templates. Okay, so we'll extend that and extend config manager. So we can see these two templates right here. Okay, if we click on the first one, which is configure configuration manager site, here we will give the information about the site. So let's just enable it. Assign site, it is TEK. Basically, rest of the information I'm keeping it default. If you would like to change it, change it. Make sure you understand what the, this means, and then if you like to make any changes, of course you can go ahead and make further changes according to your environment. So I will hit apply on that, and then click on next settings, enable. In CCM setup box, we are going to provide a CCM client installation properties. I put them in uh, a notepad. Um, so basically these are the same uh, properties we are going to use in here which we used previously in manual install which is ccm setup.exe forward slash mp and then your fully qualified management point which will be your uh, SCCM server name and SMS site code is TEK. You can add your uh, FSP as well if you have it. I have not configured and I'm going to leave that out so I will copy that and I will paste it here. So this command, I also leave it for you in the description of this video as well. So once you enter here and just hit apply and OK. So we have configured these two templates, which is good. And now we are going to configure software settings and extend that software installation. Before we do anything in software installation, what I will do is I'll browse to SD01, which is shared drive 01. And I'm going to create a new folder here. I will rename it CCM Setup. And I will open that. And here I'm going to place CCM Setup MSI file. And that MSI file lives on our SCCM server. So I will go and browse to SCCM server, which is uh, technex-sco1. And in here, under SMS underscore TEK, TEK is my site code. It will be different in your case according to your setup and um, that lives in bin so bin folder open that and i30 i386 and in further i386 we will see ccm setup msi file which is here ccm setup windows installer package uh, let's just copy that and close that 
and then paste it in our shared drive okay so once this is available here copy that path of the shared drive and close it and in software installation right click new package and we will browse to our shared drive and we will browse to backward slash backward slash technex dash dc01 backward slash applications ccm setup ccm setup assigned click ok so our software is ready as well so basically we are finished with the uh, group policies however i have seen there's a problem um, if we keep them default i will show you the problem here okay so you will see this software installation pending and the software installation did not complete policy processing because a system restart is required so to overcome this problem we have to enable two further group policies and which i will show you how to enable those policies now okay so in policies extend the policies and administrative templates and they are in system so extend system so first of all we can look at logon and if you scroll down they are uh, here always wait for the network at computer startup and log on so if you enable these policies so group policy will wait for the network and the computer to be logged on and hit apply for that and click OK so this policy is um, enabled and apart from that there's another one so scroll up and um, it is po group policies so in group policy again um, it somewhere lives in the middle so it is specify startup policy processing wait time so it's right here specify startup policy processing wait time so by default if you enable it it gives you 20 120 seconds but uh, we can change it to 30 seconds okay uh, click on apply and okay and um, we can close that so basically our group policies are now ready so what we have to do is now we can go back and log on to a computer which lives under Technex computers OU okay so I'll go back and I will log on to uh, PC-01 okay so I have logged on to PC-01 and uh, what I'm going to do is first thing here I will do a GP update so I will do GP update force and click OK so it's updating the policy while it's updating the policy I will quickly go to the Windows or the C drive of this device and uh, let's have a look in Windows and there's no folder here CCM setup okay this is just I'm um, verifying that there's no client installed on this computer okay and also if you open the control panel we do not see config manager here okay in uh, large icons so I will minimize that and minimize that so group policy is up to date now and what I will do is I will restart this computer and I'll just say yes and hit enter so it will sign me out and then it will restart I will log back into this computer alright so I logged back into PC-01 let's open task manager under task manager we go to details we should see CCM setup running you can see that here and also if we go to file explorer and then we'll browse to C drive and then in C drive windows we should see CCM setup folder here we could not see that folder previously before because the group policy was not up to date our new group policy has kicked in so it is uh, running CCM setup we could see in task manager and apart from that if you would like to verify if the group policy has been applied you can use RSOP so it is RSOP dot MS uh, MSC so I will open uh, Windows R and then run RSOP dot MSC so if you open that it is result and set of policy it will show you all the group policies which are applied on this computer or user object alright so in here if we click on computer configuration and software settings and if you extend that software installation you can see that this policy is applied and under win, uh, administrative templates and then classic administrative templates we have config manager and config manager client and we can see that these two policies has been applied as well apart from that if you do not see if you even see this one these ones here this one and config manager client these two configured uh, if still CCM setup is not running on your device what you can do is here on computer configuration right click and then click on properties 
and after that you can click on error information so as you can see that here it says group policy infrastructure success registry software installation and security if there's a problem running if ccm setup is not running you should see an error here okay so uh, basically let's go back to task manager and then as you can see that ccm setup is just now changed to ccm exec which means um SCCM client has been successfully installed and it will be available in uh, control panel as well if you log on to control panel uh, let's have a look I have just opened control panel and you can see config manager right here okay I will open config manager and under general you can see that site code is TEK all right and assign management point is technex-seo1.local which is a good news. Uh, apart from that, we should see that uh, there should be SCCM client available under Microsoft System Center, and it is here. Thanks for watching. If you feel like this video is informative for you, and uh, give this video a thumbs up, and also to show some support, subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.